Are you ready? Let's hear it for Gatsby! Hi there, my name is Lucas Silvera, and I am here with Against Me's Laura Jane Grace. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I, I didn't ask you this before, but how do you identify? Do you identify as a woman or a trans woman? Um, I'm fine with identifying as a trans woman yeah. or a woman, you know, like, but in general, just as genderqueer. Genderqueer. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's great. So you've been out for two years, mm -hmm. and I've been sort of loosely following, you know, what's been happening with you because you are unbelievably inspiring. And you come from this world of punk rock, which a lot of people would think is really, like, you know, tough and kind of machismo and whatever. How has your audience taken to you coming up? I mean, really well. Like, they've been really, really supportive. and. Not that like beforehand I thought they wouldn't be, mm -hmm. but I just didn't really know what to expect. But it's kind of been mind blowing, you know? Because that was really like the point that I got to is where I hit this real wall where I was up on stage and I didn't know who I was supposed to be up there. And like I didn't know if the people who were singing along to our songs would actually accept us or accept me if they knew who I was or the way I felt. So like that feeling was, you know, terrible so now being out and knowing that if someone's at a show that they know what I'm about and they're accepting of that and it just it makes playing music a lot more fun you mentioned about struggling with depression and a lot of trans people do struggle with depression and um, you spoke a lot about dysphoria and that's the name of, of your record transgender dysphoria blues right. so this record obviously has a lot of it is based about uh, like is on based on sort of like you coming to to, to terms with yourself being a trans woman. And did you feel like this was a record that you'd been waiting to write for years? Was it always kind of like there? Well, it's really interesting because like, I've been going back through a lot of old journals. I've kept journals since I was like 15, 16 years old. And there's so many lines that ended up as lyrics in this record that I had written repeatedly, like since I was 15, 16 years old, that like, it felt like really looking at it with that much perspective, that it, it really just took that long to kind of formulate into songs, you know, or into what I was trying to say or what I was trying to get across, for sure. Uh, so what did you think of Liver and Cox on the cover of Time magazine? I think it's a huge deal, for sure. I mean, Time in particular, you know, as a magazine, really speaks to an older generation, you know, and is really representative of that, you know, and having a transgender person on the cover is, like, pretty huge. And I think really, like, the headline that went along with it of the transgender tipping point, right, mm -hmm. is that the right wording, is, is pretty true. You sort of came out and you had to tell like your band and the people in the music industry. So when you're dealing with people in the music industry who come across people like you very, very seldomly, how did you go about handling that or did you just kind of like one day show up and we're like, here I am? Um, well, you know, again, like there, it's like there's advantages and disadvantages to, to coming out or transitioning in the public eye. And, I mean, like, telling my family and telling my band was one thing, you know, and that was what it was. It takes people their own amount of time to process things, but everyone was really supportive and understanding, and they got pretty quickly that it, I wasn't saying, like, I like different music and, like, different movies, and my sense of humor is actually totally different. They understood, mm -hmm. you know, that oh, I'm still me. You know, there was just one thing they didn't realize. Um, and being able to, like, do an interview with, like, Rolling Stone that I could hand to, like, my extended circle of friends and be like, this explains everything. If you have any other questions, go ahead and ask, but this should cover it, was like really advantageous because the idea of having one-on-one -on -one conversations with everyone seemed really exhausting, you know? Um, and in general too, like I had reached a really low point where I felt just like super uninspired by going through that whole system, you know? Like we had a really good experience with our first record on a major label and a really like disheartening experience with our second record. And I found myself feeling like that I was involved in a lot of friendships and relationships where I had to really compromise who I was in order to maintain them. And so I almost like towards the end when I was really, really struggling with dysphoria and depression, I felt like holding on to the fact that I know this about me, but you don't know this about me was almost like an ace in the pocket and like a trump card. And that coming out with that, you know, 
was a great way to purge all the unhealthy relationships of my life and, and be like, this is a line in the sand. You know, you either are going to accept me for who I am and be cool with that and it's going to be a non-issue or you can fuck off. That's good. That's yeah. good I'm drinking with the charts. Thank you so much for being here with us, Laura, Thank and uh, we'll see you guys soon.